Hello and welcome to the Practical Animal Channel. Today on location in Tring. That's for the second time. I was in Tring last week. Tring, as any animal person needs to know, is home to the Tring Museum or the Natural History Museum at Tring in Hertfordshire in South East England. The Tring Museum was founded by Lord Walter Rothschild who at the age of 22 having not done very well in his father's banking business became the owner of the Tring Museum which he'd set up as a child with small but increasingly growing collections of many species of animal. The museum is still open today and where I'm walking which is about a quarter of a mile away from Tring Museum is the property where Lord Walter Rothschild the museum owner spent his final days. So as I said in last week's video, Tring Zoological Museum. If you haven't been there you really need to visit. So I was going yesterday to try and I thought about getting one of those extendable poles for supporting a mobile. I thought I would use it today but I'm afraid that you're going to have to be satisfied with me using my own arm. I hope you don't get motion sickness. As we came down here yesterday, I was struck, as I always am, by the number of red kites in the area. Quite an interesting bird, the red kite. In the background, by the way, you can see the property where Lord Walter Rothschild spent his dying days. I'm walking in the grounds and there is really every reason to visit the Natural History Museum at Tring where Lord Walter Rothschild worked for most of his life. Dispatching expeditions, commissioning animal collectors to collect animals all over the world. I really could talk about Tring Museum all day. I spent many, many happy hours there in my youth. Red kites, always worth talking about. In the 90s, I was a, nest, a red kite nest warden. This was in the days when the population was still largely restricted to mid Wales. There is a book, The Red Kite in Wales, by Roger Lovegrove. And anybody who wants to read about the history of the red kite in the UK, particularly with an emphasis on Wales, my native country, really should read it. The Red Kite in Wales by Roger Lovegrove. I was at the British Falconry Fair not too long ago and the head falconer there was commenting in one of his displays how he had mixed feelings about red kites. They can come down and collaborate, for want of a better word, with the displays that they give at falconry centres. But really, the story of the red kite in Britain as a whole is a fascinating one. It was a conservation success story, really just waiting to happen. And, well, it really, the conservation effort was coordinated following guidelines laid out by the IUCN, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources. These are guidelines on reintroductions and translocations and they were followed in the reintroduction effort carried out by conservationists to reintroduce the red kite 
into Scotland and England. There were ecological factors that combined to mean that re it really was high time by the 90s that the red kite was reintroduced. It, it was just a perfect candidate for, re for reintroduction. Red kites, of course, being a, I suppose you could say what conservation biologists call both a flagship species and a keystone species. Probably on conservation biology courses nowadays, students learn different terms and maybe even the lecturers on those courses teach different terms. When I did conservation biology, a flagship species was a species that really grabbed the public attention and really helped people to engage with the wider world of nature. So that was a flagship species. A keystone species, on the other hand, is a species that is of vital importance in the animal kingdom. If you lose a keystone species, the ecosystem as a whole can feel the reverberations. So that's the red kite. I'm in Tring in Hertfordshire. I hope you've enjoyed this video, particularly the aspects of recent red kite conservation history. If you have enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends and followers. Uh, please click like. For more exclusive content on wildlife, the countryside and the animal industry, please subscribe to the channel. Bit of housekeeping. I am going to try, it really is lovely here. I'm thoroughly enjoying walking around here making this video for you. For, I'm a little bit of housekeeping. I'm going to try, and having said this, I'm probably not going to succeed, but I'm going to try to download videos uh, on a Friday and on a Saturday. Watch this space because I'm a very busy person, as I'm sure you are as well. But that's what I'm going to be trying to do. So stay tuned as the channel develops. We've been going a, a year, but I think if the, in the grand scheme of things, that's been a year of, of not constant and never-ending improvement, so I like to think. We're going to be, the last two weeks has been a busy time for me, so the videos have been largely uh, myself in front of the camera. Uh, as from next week, it's going to be, be me, again, behind the camera, and more of the interviews. Probably the next interview is going to be on grizzly bears with Thane Humphreys, who I've interviewed before. Thane is going to be talking about grizzly bears and the risk posed by them if you should be lucky enough to be in the North American wilderness. This video was prompted by an article, a report, that appeared in the mainstream media about a person that was unfortunately attacked repeatedly by a grizzly. We also have an interview coming up with, again, another person that we've interviewed before. She's going to be talking about vulture conservation in Africa. After that, we have an interview with a man, a French-Canadian scientist, who is a geophysicist and an ecologist. He's going to be talking about how to be successful in the fields of ecology and geophysics. We also have a very eminent bird of prey vet coming on. He's going to be talking about what it takes to be a bird of prey vet. I'm trying to arrange an interview with a, quite an eminent primatologist to talk about gorilla conservation. And there is lots more besides. So stay tuned. Thanks for your attention. Thanks for subscribing. Please stay subscribed. Please stay tuned. And I'm going to be endeavouring to post videos, interviews that is, early on a Friday and on a Saturday. Time permitting. In the meantime... May all your ewes have healthy twin lambs. May all your tarantulas have healthy molts. And most especially, may all your problems have hooked beaks. And this is me from Tring Park saying, have a good day.